Hello, class! So today we are going to learn about one of the greatest revolutions of all, the scientific revolution. There were many different types of revolution in European history, like the French Revolution and the Russian Revolution. While these two examples included violence and blood, the scientific revolution was rather peaceful and its long-term effects can still be felt today in our daily lives. The scientific revolution was an intellectual revolution when there was an explosion of new ideas on how people looked at the universe and the world. This was the era when people began to create breakthrough discoveries in science and technology and to start questioning the old theories from the, the Middle Ages or the ancient period. Scientists and philosophers proved their theories with mathematical and observational experiments, which was different from how the Middle Ages philosophers like Aristotle, Ptolemy, and Galen processed theories and beliefs. In today's lesson, I will mostly focus on the causes of the revolution, main scientists and philosophers that contributed to the revolution, and its everlasting impact in the contemporary and modern societies. Let's quickly review the chronological background of the scientific revolution to analyze the cause of it. Historians estimate the time period of the scientific revolution to be from the 1550s to 1700s. I'm sure you guys all remember the Renaissance and humanism from the earlier chapters. The Renaissance humanists began to emphasize the importance of knowledge and education. Francesco Petrarch, who was the father of humanism intellect, believed that the recovery of Roman classical texts would bring about a new golden age of intellectual achievement. The focus of both men and nature during the Renaissance motivated the intellectuals of the 16th and 17th centuries to engage in vigorous debate over science and philosophy. Though the scientific revolution mostly focused on the nature and the world, not the men. The main cause of this shift of the topic was because of the collapse of the Catholicism. The Renaissance era created the intellectual curiosity, which was the main theme of the scientific revolution. And the reason the scientific inquiries during this period was so revolutionary was because of some of the factors happening at the time. The age of exploration led to the Europeans' interests in learning stars as they discovered the link between navigation and astronomy. Furthermore, the intellectual and techn technological competition among the countries made the scientific revolution a more universal revolution. Towards the late uh, humanism, knowledge and techniques have become the center source of displaying power. Therefore, these conditions naturally motivated the Europeans to seek for improvements in technology and science and created what we are learning today, the scientific revolution. The humanism intellectuals' interest in the classical texts extended to the scientific texts of the ancient Greeks. The scientists of the scientific revolution began to question the theories of the ancient philosophers. The biggest object of inquiry was the planetary revolution. While the ancient philosopher Ptolemy believed in geocentric universe, some new scientists opposed this theory that had been around for centuries by claiming that the sun is the center of the planets. Nicholas Copernicus was one of them. He's widely known for the Copernican hypothesis, which states an idea that the sun, not the earth, is in the center of the universe. Copernicus, a daring and brave man, was born into a well-to-do merchant family. When his father died at Nicholas's age of 10, he stayed with his uncle who wanted to work for the church. At the age of 20, Copernicus went to University of Krakow to study astrology and astronomy. Later, he went to Bologna, Italy and lodged at a house with distinguished astronomer and astrologer in which his interests in those subjects augmented. Copernicus observed an eclipse of moon in Bologna. By the time he got a doctorate degree in law in 1503, he was a knowledgeable astronomer and was already beginning to develop his ideas about a heliocentric universe. His uncle arranged for Copernicus to work at a cathedral, and during this time, he took the advantage of his position to consolidate his ideas. Also, the cathedral was the place where Copernicus developed his discoveries. He frequently climbed up to the top of the cathedral to gaze at the night sky. He then published a handwritten book for his friends called Commentatoriolus. This written work contained the outline of his revolutionary theory. 
despite that he had published this work to his friends. He was extremely careful with his theory going to public because of the Catholic Church. Thus, he kept his ideas quiet because he thought it simply too dangerous to publicize his ideas. His larger work, the Revolutionibus Oribum uh, Celestium, was not published until 1543, by which time Copernicus was on his deathbed. Copernicus's theory was condemned soon after the publication of his ideas. Copernicus's work brought an enormous shock to the religious leaders, particularly the Protestants like John Calvin and Martin Luther. The Catholics' reaction was mild at first since they never had literal interpretation of the Bible. Though in 1616, books that Copernicus had published were listed on the forbidden to read list by the Catholic Church. But soon after that, a number of other scientists began to praise the new way of looking at the universe and began to prove the truth of the Copernican hypothesis. One of the scientists was Galilei Galileo. Galileo was a brilliant inventor, astronomer, and scientist. He created the first accurate clock, thermometer, and sector. His another invention was a telescope and was one of the most useful tools to discover the planetary motion and the appearance of the universe. Although his telescope invention wasn't the first telescope in the European history, the quality of his telescope was, it, was awe-striking and the way Galileo utilized his tools made him become a historical figure in the field of science. Even though he wasn't the first one to invent a telescope, he was the one named the telescope. Galileo was the first to observe the craters of the moon, the sunspots, the ring of the Saturn, and the four large moons of Jupiter with his telescope. While the old telescopes magnified the object only by three times, Galileo's device magnified by 20 times. He pioneered the law of motion and challenged the old ideas. He examined his hypothesis and theories with experimental method. Unlike Copernicus, who was cautious about the religious madness, Galileo published his theory in the book Dialogue on the Two Chief Systems of the World while he was still alive. At the old age, Galileo suffered from religious persecution and he was tried for heresy by the papal inquisition because of his belief. The year Galileo died, a soon-to-be a renowned scientist, Sir Isaac Newton was born in England on Christmas Day. He's the last scientist that we will review today. Despite the church's effort to diminish the rising scientific influences, in 1646, the works of Galileo and other scientists that we didn't focus on, like Kepler and Brahe, became more widely accepted. Although the previous theories were correct, they all dismissed a crucial law of universe that supported all the theories of motion and heliocentric universe, and that is the law of gravitation. The genius Newton united the experimental and theoretical mathematics sides of the modern science. His mathematical and theoretical experiments are still used in the modern day, which shows how much the influence of scientific revolution was grand and magnificent. So I'd like to end this video with the effects of the scientific revolution. This intellectual revolution was truly revolutionary. If you think about it, we experience the application of science every day. In fact, I wouldn't be teaching you through this video if it wasn't for the scientific revolution. If these scientists during the scientific revolution didn't pioneer in ex expressing their brilliant and original theories to the public, then the today's world wouldn't be as developed. Although there are some negative effects of the scientific revolution as we can experience through wars, weaponry, and colonial invasions, we can't dismiss the fact that the scientific revolution was a groundbreaking period in European history, and its long-term effects still live in the 21st century.